This tutorial is going to be a detailed guide on Free Fire, covering everything from downloading the game to key mapping step by step. Apart from that, I will also reveal a trick in this video that will allow you to play PUBG Lite on your PC without facing a simulation error. So, watch the video carefully and don't skip any part, otherwise you might miss out. Alright, enough talking, let's start the video. First, let's talk about file downloading, as this is the biggest issue my subscribers face. That's why I'll walk you through the complete process of downloading a file. To begin, you need to go to the About section of my channel, where you'll find the link to my website. Just click on it to open the site. Alternatively, you can manually type Tech Decode Official in the search bar. Now, if you're watching this video a long time after its release, you might need to search for the file manually. Otherwise, you'll find the post right at the top. For example, I'll click on this post and scroll down to the bottom. Here, you'll find the download link for the file. Click on it to open the page. Next, a CAPTCHA will appear. Complete it, and then click the Next button. If any new tab opens, simply close it. After that, click on the Continue button and wait a few seconds. Then, click Continue again, followed by clicking the Get Link button. A new page will now open where you need to wait for 10 seconds. And once the countdown is over, click the final download button, and your file will be ready to download. I hope you've successfully downloaded all the files by now. If so, great. Now, let's move on to the next chapter, which is installing Disk Genius. If you already have Disk Genius installed on your system, you can skip this part. However, since many of my subscribers struggle with the installation process, I'll guide you through it step by step. First, Extract the Disk Genius zip file. Once extracted, you'll see a folder which you need to open and then launch the setup file. From here, install it just like you would with any other software. Once the installation is complete, navigate to the extracted folder where you'll find two subfolders, one for 32-bit systems and the other for 64-bit systems. Select the file that matches your PC's architecture. Next, copy all the files from this folder and paste them into the Disk Genius main directory. And that's it. Your Disk Genius installation is now complete. After installing it, the next step is to extract the ISO file. Since this file is around 2 GB in size, so the extraction process might take some time. Once the extraction is complete, open Disk Genius. Next, choose a partition with at least 10 GB of free space and ensure that it doesn't contain any data. Then, right-click on the selected partition and choose the Format option. After that, a dialog box will appear. And in this dialog, select EXT4 as the partition system, leave the volume label blank, and click on the Format button to begin the formatting process. Since my partition is already formatted, I won't format it again. Once the formatting is complete, open the same partition. Now, take all the contents of the extracted ISO file and drag and drop them into Disk Genius. This will start copying the files to the partition. Once all the files have been successfully copied, we're ready to move on to the next chapter, which is Grub Installation. You will find two files related to Grub1 is an offline setup. I recommend downloading the online version because it will install the latest version and download all necessary boot files according to your system, minimizing the chances of errors. However, if the online version does not work on your system, you can go for the offline one. Here, I am using the online version, so I will simply open and install it. Once the installation is complete, you need to open Grub and click on the Manage Boot Menu option. After that, select the Add New Entry option and then choose the Submenu option from the dropdown. Next, click on Edit Custom Code, copy the entire text from the downloaded code, and paste it here. Finally, save this file and click the Apply button. With this, our setup is now complete. I will now restart my PC and record the rest of the process using a hand cam. After restarting your PC, a boot menu will appear, where you can also boot into Windows. However, for now, I will select the entry for Android OS. Next, you will see multiple kernel variants. Keep in mind that when booting for the first time, you should select the first kernel. In future boots, you can change the kernel if needed, especially if you face issues like Wi-Fi connectivity or other problems. Once selected, the OS will start booting, and after the booting process is complete, the Android setup page will appear. Now, just like you set up your phone, 
you need to follow the same steps to complete the Android OS setup on your PC. As you can see, Atom OS has been successfully installed and is running very smoothly. First, let's talk about the Android version. This OS comes with Android 7, and you will also get full support for the Play Store. Additionally, you can further tweak the performance of this OS, which I will show you later in the video. Apart from this, if we talk about the key mapping software, this OS comes with Octopus Key Mapper, which is a premium key mapping software. Before installing any game, we need to adjust some settings. These settings are not mandatory, but if you configure them, you will notice some performance improvements and be able to utilize all system resources more efficiently. For this, open L speed and set all the available options to performance mode. After that, click on the Kill Media Server option and then select the Boost option. Now it's time for game installation, and for this, we will use the Play Store exclusively. This means we won't install any third-party app stores or manually install APK files because doing so increases the chances of errors in the OS. So open the Play Store and log in using your Google ID. Once logged in, search for Free Fire and download it. After installing Free Fire, I will also try PUBG Lite, so I'll go ahead and download that as well. Now that Free Fire has been installed, let's open it. I have reached the login page, and for now, I will log in using a guest account. As you can see, I have reached the lobby, and there's absolutely no lag, the game is running smoothly. Before starting a match, we need to adjust two settings. First, we have to lower the graphics because if we don't, the game will lag a lot. Then, we need to set up key mapping. To do this, go to the control section and select Customize HUD. Then at the top, you will see the Octopus Key Mapper logo. Just click on it and choose Keyboard Layout. If you have a gamepad, you can select that instead. Next, you need to assign all the keys, so I'll quickly do that and get back to you. Now that I've assigned all the keys, I will simply start the match. As you can see, the match has started, and I'm getting a decent FPS. Additionally, the key mapping is working perfectly. Now, before anyone calls this video fake, let me reopen the game and show you the gameplay again, so you can be sure that everything is real. As you can see, even after restarting the game, it is still running smoothly. Now it's time to test PUBG. And keep in mind that I am talking about PUBG Lite, not the mobile version, because the mobile version will never run on a 2GB RAM PC. First, I will open the game without using any trick, so I can show you the error. As you can see, the error has appeared again, and now we will fix it. To fix this issue, open the Play Store and search for DNS Changer. Then, download this specific application. Once it's installed, open it and carefully follow the exact settings I'm applying. You should not change these numbers on your own, or else it won't work. After configuring the settings, click on the Start button to activate the custom DNS. Now, launch the game again. Keep in mind that after connecting to DNS, the game might take a little longer to launch. If this DNS doesn't work for you, I will provide an alternate one. As you can see, this time there is no error, and I have successfully reached the lobby. Now let's start a match and see how many FPS we get on a 2GB RAM PC. The match has started, but due to just 2GB RAM, I am only getting around 12 to 15 FPS, which is not good enough for smooth gameplay. Overall, this OS is really good, and I highly recommend trying it, especially if you want to play Free Fire on a low-end PC. However, for PUBG Lite, I wouldn't recommend this OS for low-end users. But if you still want to try playing on it, I have made a dedicated video on that, which you can watch it by clicking on the tutorial on the left, and I will meet you there.